This is in the meeting minus condition. So Alice Enable points to a tangle of red, green, and blue lines on her computer screen. Each is a bit like a printout from a lie detector test. And there is no discernible pattern here. That is the brain going over and over again, like what? Yeah, exactly. Like I can't, you keep saying this word, but <laughs> I can't attach any meaning to it. Abel is an assistant professor in San Diego State's School of Speech, Language, and Hearing Sciences. And she runs a lab where she studies brain responses. The goal is to get a a better picture of how we go from hearing a new word to understanding what it means. For the past four years, she's done that by plotting kids' neural activity as she teaches them made-up words. So this cap has 64 electrodes in it and each one has a sponge. So we've already put sponges in the cap and the sponges go between the electrode and to his scalp. To take these measurements, she uses something called an electroencephalogram, or an EEG. It's a tight-fitting cap that looks like something you'd see in a science fiction movie. It's dotted with little connectors. Abel's assistant uses a syringe to inject liquid into them. And it has a little bit of a saline solution in there that um, collects the electrical activity better. 13-year-old Duncan Ha was kind enough to model the cap for me. He's the son of one of Abel's colleagues. Abel captures Duncan's brain activity on her computer so she can trace exactly what happens as he hears her made-up words. So you are going to hear sets of three sentences. Each sentence ends with a nonsense word, with a made-up word. Some nonsense words will represent a real word, and some will not. Ready? Mm -hmm. The two boys fought over the shap. They played catch with the shap. In gym class, I like to throw the shap. Does shap have a real word meaning? Yes. What is it? Ball. And good. Okay. So you hit either button and we'll get going. I need a footstool for my gows. She drinks milk from a gows. You bring the drinks and I'll bring the gows. So there, Gauss doesn't mean anything. Duncan's brain activity makes that messy lie detector-like squiggle. But in that first exercise, when he hears the word shap, it's a stand-in for a real noun, ball. And in his brain activity, you can actually see learning happening. It starts with a big dip on the line graph during that first sentence. The two boys fought over the shap. That means Duncan is confused. His neurons aren't sure what he's just encountered. The second and third sentences add context. They played catch with the shap. In gym class, I like to throw the shap. And the dip gets shallower and shallower until it becomes a peak. So the third time they hear the nonsense word, it looks like the brain is processing it like it's a real word. So this is blue awesome. line, this blue line is where it means that they have actually learned. That's what we're interpreting it as. The brain is responding to it the exact same way that the brain responds to a known word. Another way to think about this is with a baseball analogy. The unknown word is a ball headed for the left center field gap. The neurons are players scrambling to field a triple. As the ball drops and the runner rounds first, the players know more about how the play will unfold. The team's efforts become streamlined and targeted. The first time there's a lot of work as the brain is working really hard to try to figure out what this word is and how it's going to fit it into the sentence. Then the second time that they hear the nonsense where the brain is working less hard because now they know the, it's heard the word, right? And they've started to attach meaning to it. And in this case, the third time that they hear the word, there's less effort involved because they've already been able to attach meaning to this word. This is also what's happening when you hear something in conversation you weren't expecting. He butters his bread with socks. And even if one of Abel's subjects isn't sure they know what the nonsense word stands for, she can tell by looking at their brain response. The brain doesn't lie. Abel is hoping her work can help teachers and speech-language pathologists. They can use her findings to develop strategies for kids who take a little longer to reach that blue curvy line that signifies learning. Megan Burks, KPBS News. The headphones go in your helm.